This is going to be a really brief session on material that I've covered concerning DBE. It's just that this example is just such a good one. I would not have been able to produce the image that I did of this object without utilizing the method, this technique that I'm going to demonstrate. So let me show you where the problem is because this, this data is challenging. This is uh, an image of the Pleiades using an astrograph and what is interesting is that whenever you have really bright stars in the field and you take a long exposure, I'm going to make the image a bit more contrasty here so you can see this, but what you end up with is a brightness around the edge of the frame, and this, this is in all the colors, um, where it is actually brighter towards the edge. Even though this is flat fielded relatively well, this is just an effect of having bright stars in the field. And so DBE is the obvious choice to take care of this kind of issue. But uh, one of the interesting things is, and this is what made it such a challenge, is that if you apply a typical instance of DBE, and what I mean by that is you carefully, and I actually did do this, carefully place as many you know safe samples as you can everywhere in the image to try to take care of this particular problem, it simply doesn't work. And um, what I may be doing is making this data available so that you can see that for yourself, play with it, and see if you can find a solution in kind of the standard way of doing this. Uh, but let's just see what happens when I, you know, just go ahead and do something like that. And then we get a result which just, uh, it's just terrible. But what can I say? There is just no, there is just no goodness about this result. So. Don't want to show you that. Instead, let me show you the way that you want to potentially approach problems like this and problems that you might have with your own data that are similar. So yes, I want to cancel. What I'm going to suggest is you try to identify first before you place a single sample, you look at the image and you say, is there something symmetric about the gradient that I see? And the answer here is yes. I mean, it's not perfect, but I certainly see a radial gradient going from the outside being brightest to the inside being darkest. So that tells me that there is some kind of somewhat of a circular symmetry to what I'm observing here. And that, of course, gives me a clue as to what I should do with DBE. I should use some of the symmetries things. So I have the answer here of what I actually did, but let's just reproduce it by hand again. Let's see, we'll go to DBE. So this is from scratch. What we first need to do is, uh, I've got it set up here. Let's set up some parameters that we know we need to do. So for example, we're gonna, I'm looking at this image and in order to take care of the problem, we know we need to be relatively tolerant because there's a big difference between the very brightest things and the very dimmest parts of this gradient. So we're gonna need to be tolerant to um, characterize that gradient or model this background well. Five is a very typical kind of medium aggressive um, tolerance to use. Also, all of the stuff that I'm seeing going on is very large scale. So I don't need to make any kind of small scale adjustments near sample size or anything like that. So the smoothing factor can be quite large. So 0.6 is a typical parameter a value for kind of a large smooth gradient uh, correction. Um, and then as far as the uh, sample generation is concerned, we're going to place them by hand, but we want to make sure we have, you know, large enough samples, maybe 18 pixels, I don't know, some number like that. And having that in hand, now we can go place samples. What I notice about this is that, uh, you know, I can stretch the image and look for uh, the nebulosity, but what I see is that there is, there's more nebulosity over on this side. There's a little bit here, but you know, there's almost like a corridor, a quadrant, where there isn't that much over here to the left of the nebula. It happens to be, or the, the cluster, it happens to be that I'm working on the red, but I figured that if I can make this work in the red data, it's probably going to work in the other colors because the red is going to be the thing that's most strongly affected by the gradients, uh, since the red information of this field is very is the faintest. It's faintest in red, 
the nebulosity and so on is much brighter in the blue and the green. So make it work in red, it'll probably just work. Let's go ahead and place a sample. So the sample first that I want to place is I look here at this corridor. This is my radial corridor, or corridor and I'm going to place a sample somewhere near the outside, then maybe another sample a bit closer in to characterize this gradient, and maybe even one more. So three points, three samples is what I'm going to worry about. So let's place maybe a sample here, avoiding, you know, stars and things. It's okay to have a, a, you know, a few stars in here, but if we can make it relatively white, one star, that's fine. So there's our first sample, and I'm going to take advantage of the axial symmetry here. You see, this starts as a polygon. If I zoom out, you get some kind of polygonal shape here. It's hard to see because I have the image relatively bright. Let's go the other way. There's my polygon. Um, and by increasing this, we can basically make it like a circle. And what we're, what we're saying is that this sample here is going to characterize all positions everywhere constant along that circle. So it's as if I'm placing samples, thousands of them, uh, along that circle to define that, um, that particular position uh, for modeling purposes. Then we're going to come in somewhere. Usually, uh, this is just a rule of thumb, usually you don't need that many samples to characterize the gradient here. So I notice there's a little bit of a, there's some nebulosity or something there, but there's a little bit of a dark patch here. So maybe I'll place sample number two. It's a bit closer radially, but maybe here. So we'll make it again axial. And then perhaps one more sample will need to be closer still. Maybe we go, I don't know, somewhere around here or here. I don't know. We'll just try here. I'm not going to be too careful about it. And we'll do one more of these things. So that's it. I've set my samples. Now, that wasn't too terribly hard. Three samples, right? So we go to our correction type. Division is the method of choice. Um, I, that's an entirely different topic as to why I think division is the one that should be used most of the time. Uh, most errors are flat field errors. Here we have some kind of uh, noise, uh, excuse me, extra light near the edges, but I think that division is the right way to go. So we're going to use it, although you can try both ways and I think you'll find they're fairly similar in the result. And that's it. We should be able to apply this and see what kind of model we get. And overall, this is giving us a, uh, you know, kind of like that gradient that we're, we're seeing in the image where we're starting uh, bright out here, getting darker inside, so it's modeling things. So let's look at the actual result. And here we have a definitely an improved kind of image. So let's, um, let's exit out of this here to begin with. And what we'll do is we'll just do the automatic stretch on this one and an automatic stretch on this one. And we can go back and forth really quickly here, page down. So what you'll notice is that it took care of a lot of that gradient. It re reveals, I can see a little bit of nebulosity over here on the right side, some other nebulosity here. But the corners, that wasn't entirely taken care of. But that's not symmetric, you know, that's just, uh, there was an asymmetry there. These two corners are brighter than the other two corners. That's okay too. We just do a second run of DBE. Now we do kind of that normal method of placing samples here throughout the image as we might want. Um, you'll want to maybe make this a little brighter so we can see some of the, the bits of nebulosity. So we don't have to always step on those. Let's, um, oh, I gotta click here. Let's again keep our samples healthy sized, 18. And we'll still use, we could lessen it. We could make the tolerance a little less if we wanted to, maybe three instead of five. Um, and then we do 0.6 again, still keeping it relatively smooth. Uh, and then once again, you place, you know, samples. 
So there's a sample there, and maybe I place another one up here, trying to avoid stars. You want mostly white in your um, in your preview. And I would just go around, and I'm not going to be too careful. Just kind of go around to the parts of the image. Now I'll go through the middle here, picking somewhere dark, not a nebula. And, you know, this is darkish. This looks kind of dark. Fine. I'm not going to even worry about that. We come down here. Um, see, I see some nebulosity, but then there's just this overall kind of brightness in the corner. So maybe we put a couple of samples down here, like this. I'm really not being very careful. And I hope that gives you hope that you don't have to be terribly careful to get a good result. And that's pretty much it. That's that's what I do. Maybe we put a couple of samples down here. We didn't really get this corner. I'm going to avoid where it looks like there's nebulosity there. I don't know. It seems like there's some excess uh, stuff going on down there. Maybe we should be more tolerant. Maybe even down there we'll be more tolerant than normal. There. Maybe that'll help. Okay, anyway, there we are. So I've, with abandon, placed samples. <laughs> not, not really terribly concerned. And let's see what kind of result we get this time. Okay, we'll look at the model here and see how it looks. Yeah, it's a little lumpy, uh, but let's see what the, the result is here. Not bad. I can still see some, some stuff down here in the corner, perhaps. This corner, the very corner. But overall, the field now looks relatively good. So that is the technique for taking advantage of this this idea of using symmetries first, and that kind of reveals everything else um, that needs to be taken care of. And then you, hopefully, without too terrible much thought, place samples to take care of the rest of it. And then you have what is now an image that can be used to um, create a very good result. So this is what I did to each of the channels, that two-step process, doing first those three samples for the axial symmetry, and then just putting some points around it. I may have even used the same points. I can't remember now. Uh, but that allowed me to create an image where uh, much of this nebulosity could be displayed. I just would not have been able to do it to this degree without having made this adjustment using DBE. The corners would have been too bright. The edges would have been too bright. Uh, the gradients would have affected the ability to distinguish between bluish nebulosity and reddish nebulosity. And uh, I, the particular, I love this particular element here where you have some blue going in front of apparently some background yellowish stuff. So that's the idea, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson on DBE. Just again, really briefly, how to take advantage of that method. First, do the symmetry bit, then place some points. Uh, to take care of any remaining issues um, that need to be modeled out.